What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here. Now I was going to bring you my one day debut today, but I did just play that and let's just say it wasn't pretty. I was getting hit around like this, like we are on this four day game. I went for, I didn't even bowl my 10 overs, went for 55 I think or something ridiculous. It just was not pretty. So hopefully we can go and pick up our game in the four day, well in the first class game, you know, in the four day, the longer format. Hopefully that will go and bring us a bit of luck. But yeah, it wasn't pretty. Scored a few runs. I think I got 24 off about 20 coming in at number 6. And that's one of the things that I really... Well, the main reason that I did list myself as a number 6 batsman in this game was to get away from the fact that it was going to be a makeshift wicketkeeper that was coming in because I was taking their space at number 7. But with coming in at number 6, it puts... A bit more emphasis on my batting as well. A bit more emphasis being that I do need to score runs. I need to do need to be a bit more selective and not go out and just slog all the time. So um, I'm just going to change my field to this guy because it's my first ball against him. But yeah, it means that I need to go out and try and contribute with the bat rather than just being the boom boom of um and picking up a four and a six and then getting out. So. Hopefully we can go, and I will have some betting. Uh, I'll have some betting videos for you guys coming up uh, soon. But hopefully we can go and really go and improve on that average. It's not looking too flash at the moment. In saying that, though, we have only batted twice in first class cricket, and we batted once in uh, in one day cricket, which I just told you about before. I scored 24 off about 20. So going at a good pace, and hopefully, hopefully we can start to pick up some wickets because I don't know what's going on. It's just like all of a sudden, the wicket the wicket spree has just gone dry. The wicket spring, it's just not happening. It's very weird. Normally they'll go, especially at this stage, they'll try and play you down the ground and try and hit you in the air down the ground, and it will just go to the fielder normally. But they just can't seem to connect with it. They're hitting it into the ground every time, and that is frustrating. Frustrating from my point of view. Frustrating from your point of view because I'm not getting any wickets and that's what you guys come here to watch you come here to watch me get wickets you come here to watch me get runs not catches because I don't field I simulate the fielding but a maiden that's not too bad we'll definitely go and uh, and take that out swing trying to get that skill up and what I am trying to do in this career mode that I didn't do in my PS3 one is try and get those bowling skills that I guess probably are a bit less used and people don't use them as much you know kind of like the leg cutter the off cutter just trying to go and get them up earlier on in my career so that I can I guess get my players level up I mean there's like five you can get up to five levels in this game for those who don't know obviously level one being the lowest rated and level five being the highest rated so the higher your rating obviously the better your player are etc etc so I think in my career on PS3 I actually only got up to level 2 on my career because basically I just did the same thing all the time I just bowled either straight seam up or bowled outswing um, and so I want to go and try and I guess remedy that a little bit plus it didn't help that I didn't score too many runs with a bat either so hopefully I can go and turn that around in this game we can score some runs with a bat that one there is a little bit uppish that's what we want we want more of those going up in the air either to us or to the men that are at mid on and mid off because that is the run well that is the catching position that I like to have in there as we go and bowl another maiden so we've bowled a couple of maidens now and things are looking pretty tight at the moment so that's good economical that's what we want to see back and that is actually the end of the first session uh, Western Australia probably on top there as they walk off with 83 um, 83 for one but I think we did actually pick up a wicket we did pick up a wicket actually uh, early on so that's what we like to see but the player down the non-strikers end is one, of the is one of those players who is you know he's been on the cusp of international selection and I, he kind of did take his chances when they presented to him but I guess he was just never really in the frame Mr Adam Voges down the non-strikers end and it must be not frustrating as a first class player because I mean Adam Voges is still going and I mean he probably plays for the love of the game but he's one of those players that probably should have been selected for higher honours a lot more often another player who springs to mind actually is playing in the South Australian side to date um, which is Callum Ferguson and he's one of those players who was in there and I guess just due to injuries 
he missed out on other players who came in and obviously stepped up and took their chance. But, I mean, both of those players, both Voges and Ferguson, probably could have, as I said, been selected for higher honours a bit more often. Um, I mean, Voges especially, because he's coming to the end of his career. Callum Ferguson is probably, if he is going to get selected again for for Australia, now is probably the time to do it, because I guess he's... Now I think he's about 30. He's probably matured quite a lot. He know, he'll know his game inside out. And, you know, who knows? He may come back. He was a very solid player. I think he averaged about 40 in one day. Um, but I don't think he ever scored 100. Much like Voges, actually. But Voges did score 100 later on in his career. So everyone else is picking up wickets except me at this stage. This is a bit of a concern because I want to get the wickets because this recording is about me. It's about my player and me being able to score runs. So uh, I was going to say Mitch Marsh, but that'll actually be Sean Marsh coming in at number five. Mitch Marsh comes in at number six. Unless, I don't know. <clears throat> I could be wrong. There may actually be... Oh. There may actually be, because in the... This is the third first-class game I'm playing. And in the first two, Phil Hughes was the captain. But now, when I come into this one, Michael Klinger is actually the captain. So I don't know whether there's like a rotation or players can be brought in and out of the side um, in this version. That's got to be gone. That has got to be gone. We're going to finally pick up a wicket. Oh, it's been a while, but we pick him up LBW. Got him trapped in front. His bat just got caught on his pad, and we've finally gone, picked up a wicket. In comes the man I was just talking about, Mitchell Marsh. He had a very good game against the English on... When did the Australians and the English play? Saturday. They played on Saturday. He picked up about 5 for five for about 35, I think. And that's his career best figures. And a lot of people are saying with him scoring runs... Well, no, he didn't score runs. With him taking wickets there, has really thrown a bit of a spanner in the works to the Australian side. Because James Faulkner, we all know, he is a great finisher with both bat and and ball and he can do a lot but now with Mitchell Marsh going and putting his hand up in this instinct here is there a way that you can fit both of them into your side and Glenn Maxwell I mean you can't drop him because he probably is I mean he's in good form with the bat don't get me wrong he is in great form with the bat but he also offers oh my god why am I bowling no balls all the time now he also offers very handy off spin bowling and that is good to have to tie down an end because to be completely honest with you, I think Xavier Doherty was probably selected due to the fact that if they played on a pitch that spun, he would play. But I don't think he's going to get too many games in this World Cup. I think they'll go for Maxwell, and Maxwell will be their bowler. That actually wasn't a free hit from Marsh, so he could have been out then. And I think that's just going on to miss leg stump. But yeah, the only way that I can see being able to fit both, well sorry, all three of Mitchell Marsh, uh, Glenn Maxwell and James Faulkner into the same side is to drop Watson and have someone replace Watson at three. It's what everyone wants. All the memes on Facebook are saying it. Everyone's saying everyone to replace Watson at three. But I don't know because Watson, even though people are saying to drop him and he hasn't had the best of runs lately, he's one of those players that can win you a match with the bat. He's very useful with the ball. He's very experienced with the ball. A lot more experienced than the likes of Mitchell Marsh. <clears throat> but then you throw another spanner in the works with Michael Clark supposedly coming back in the next game. And how do you fit him, Steve Smith, and George Bailey, and Glenn Maxwell into that middle order? It's very frustrating. But I guess the one good thing for the Australians is that it's a selection dilemma that they want to make and this was a, a a bit of the case not the black caps of recent times but the black caps i guess of maybe four or five years back and it was kind of one of those things where you were deciding on a squad and you were kind of you had maybe eight nine ten players that were going to be in your starting 11 and then the other players were kind of like well who can we put in there and that isn't the selection dilemma you want to have. You want to, you don't want to be saying, all right, who is who is the next best player that we can go and put in here? You want to be saying, right, who's in form, who's out of form, what's going to work best for our team, for our side? And that's, uh, that's what New Zealand have at the moment. New Zealand and Australia are very, very strong chance. Well, they have very strong chances 
at this World Cup. I reckon both of them are going to make the semi-finals. I'll say South Africa are going to make the semi-finals because uh, not yesterday, on Sunday, they scored 330 odd, and that's without De Kock, Amla, Duplessis, and De Villiers scoring many runs at all. David Miller scored 130 odd. JP Dumini scored 100. So they are very dangerous as well. The four semi-finalists could go either way. I mean, it is really hard to tell. Maybe England because the conditions suit them the best. I. But then you can't really count out the Asian teams. I mean, India, they looked pretty good yesterday. Not yesterday. They played... God, man, I'm getting my days mixed up. They played on Sunday. They played against Sunday against Pakistan. Um, and they didn't look... You know, they didn't look too bad. I mean, their batting was good. Their bowling was good enough. And I guess that's all you've got to do. When you've got such a strong batting lineup like the Indians do, if your batting's good enough and you score enough runs, then you're probably going to go and defend it, no matter how bad your bowlers are. <clears throat> But then again, saying that, it all just depends. Cricket is a funny game. Anything could happen. Who knows? Maybe one of the minnows will go and make it through. You know, maybe someone that's that has been written off a wee bit. You know, the likes of maybe a West Indies will go and make it through. The Zimbabwe side, even though they lost yesterday, yesterday against South Africa, they still look pretty decent. They started off well. Started off bowling well. And their chase wasn't too bad. They just ran out of wickets at the end um, to go and, and try and get something else going. I Wow. That was actually pretty close to being a catch. I want to go and pick up another wicket so I can go and end this commentary. I really wanted to go and bring you guys a one-day game today, but my one-day form with the ball has just not been good. It hasn't really even been that good in this game um, with one for 22 off our overs so far. And we're just... Oh, no, we're just lacking at the moment that killer instinct to go and pick up a wicket. And maybe that has something to do with the pitches we're playing on. Maybe it has something to do with my bowling ability. Who knows? But... Things can only get better, right? And hopefully we can go and uh, and pick up a couple of wickets here. Because we picked up Pfeiffer in our debut game. We picked up six. Uh, we picked up three each in both the innings of our other first class game. So who knows? We're going to have a wee appeal at that. Not out. That honestly looked like there was a guy behind the umpire. It looked like the umpire had gone and stuck his hands out. But just crazy. Just crazy. Why... I don't know why I can't pick up any wickets. It is very, very strange. Very unusual to not go and pick up wickets. I mean, I am an economical bowler, and I am a wicket-taking bowler as well. But that just hasn't really come to the floor today, which is a bit of a disappointment. But hopefully we can go and pick one up in these last two balls, because then I am going to look at wrapping things up. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please remember to leave a like. If you are new, please do subscribe. Tune in tomorrow. I'm going to have some more Slender for you, episode 3. Carrying on where we left off last time when we were dragged away by the Slender Man. That's going to be pretty scary. Thursday, Cricket Coach Dutch Domination. As I said yesterday, that is going to be back. A lot of people have been asking for it. So, if you ask, you get. So, that's going to be coming your way on Thursday. And then... Friday, we're going to have some more Don Bradman cricket. Hopefully a one-day game, but we will just have to wait and see. Do hope you have had a good day so far, guys, and we will catch you tomorrow.